made a pit stop and don't really know where I am. <laughs> we were kind of looking for campsites, but I don't think I want to camp there. In, I know just what we'll do. We'll pack our bags and quit our jobs and have a holiday for two. We'll pack our bags and quit our jobs and have a holiday for two. Hey everybody, it's Dave here, and welcome to part two of our Bloody Basin Road Camp Trip. <laughs> Tammy and I decided to take the quad out and do a little exploring. We want to go find some campsites, and just check out the area and see what's out there. And of course we've got campsites just like you see off to the right there. Every now and then you'll see little pull-offs or spots where you can pull out and camp. This is all BLM land. You're going to look for the Bloody Basin Road exit off I-17 and go west of the freeway. If you go east, you're going to run into the Awa Freya National Monument. And you can camp over there too. There's spots I'll show you later on, but we're just going to cover the west side here. And you look along the road, there's lots of little places to pull out. Some are really easy to get to. Others might be a little more challenging. Uh, there was one real nice spot I found right there at the top of a hill. If you have a four-wheel drive vehicle with good ground clearance and a rooftop tent or just a tent you want to get out and camp and you have a beautiful view that's it that's the spot right there oh we're going to be heading right there to quarter station look off to the left you'll see another neat spot off to the left there was a big school bus parked over there the weather was great it was a little breezy but it was just beautiful it's definitely cooler up here than phoenix usually about 10 12 degrees cooler in the daytime and you see that sign right there that tells you you're getting close to Cordes station which is the end of bloody basin road a couple of nice things this road is graded and maintained and you really don't need a four-wheel drive to use this road and pretty soon you're going to be coming up on another end of the uh, road here there's another road at the junction comes to and you'll see that in just a minute you can take this road if you want and make a right up here and go to Spring Valley which is about oh, five miles north or you can go and make a left and go down to Cleeter and we'll do that in another trip as well but this junction has a lot of history here this used to be the main junction of the road between Phoenix and Prescott there was a store over there you see off to the left with a gas pump and had a service station stuff but it's been closed down for years it was open but it's no longer in fact every there's signs that say no trespassing so i we didn't want to get anybody we didn't want to get in trouble so we kind of stayed off and just to see the signs is private there but this was there was a little single gas pump there and uh, they had a little store and a gas pump so people came from prescott to Phoenix, they'd stop and get some of the store and get some gas and go on down the road. <laughs> but uh, all the signs said no, no trespassing. trespassing. Keep out. Okay. Yep, keep out. <laughs> so we went and turned south of the junction, and there was a spot down here. I'll show you on the map here. I wanted to check it out. I saw it on the map, and I wanted to see what it looked like for camping. And it's a nice little spot. I don't think I want to take the motorhome down this road, but uh, I wouldn't mind taking my, my pickup truck and uh, cargo trailer down this road, maybe camping for a night, but it's, it's uh, a little bit rough in spots for a motorhome. Tammy went down here and she saw the trees and said, oh, I bet there's some black walnut trees. 
so we made a little pit stop up here in a minute but I just wanted to see if there was any spots to camp and sure enough there was but somebody had already taken it before we got there so I just turned around and went back I think you'll see it as I get up the hill there's a truck a couple of vehicles parked at the end up there Tammy's like well why don't you just keep going I go well, I don't want to interrupt somebody's campground you know <laughs> I don't like to do that what a beautiful view though all, all the way you can see off to the west there that's all those mountains that are called the Bradshaws and in fact if you stay on that road that we were just on go to Cleeter you can go on up to Crown King that way too but we just decided to pull off here and do a little uh, hunting for black walnuts <laughs> We're making a pit stop. Tammy's looking for black walnuts. This is about the right altitude. And I don't really know where I am. <laughs> uh, this is the fun part. And there's like a little junction down there. I don't even know if it's got, oh, Cordis Station. That's what it was called. Cordis Station. Cordis, like Cordis Junction, then you got Cordis Lakes. Well, that's Cordis, Cordis Station. I think at one time there was a store there with a gas pump. Maybe even farther back in the past, it might have been like a stagecoach stop. Just guessing. But uh, it's really kind of pretty out here. Got all these junipers. Tammy's looking for black walnuts. You can find them on the ground. Kind of like we found up in uh, Camp Verde. But I don't know what a black walnut tree would look like. Oh, these, I think, are junipers. These have like little... Little berry, little seeds or something right there. Yeah, they have like a little smell to them. We're just out riding around, having fun. See where the roads lead us. It's so weird here. You got this tree here, and then you got all these cactus right there mixed in. It's a little breezy today. Find anything? Nope. All right, back on the. Shall we get back on the road? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, back on the road again. Now this road here is called Antelope Creek Road that we're on. We're going north to a little town that's about five miles up the road called Spring Valley. And all along this road for about five miles, you'll find little pull-offs where you can camp. Although we were disappointed in one spot we pulled off and I'll show you just up, uh, keep watching, you'll see it in just a few minutes. There were some really great spots to pull off and camp along this road and the road is nice and smooth and graded and maintained just like I said so you could really you could easily get a motorhome back here on this road pull a big trailer or whatever you wanted and there's some really nice little spots except for a couple that we were disappointed in you'll see those in just a minute beautiful drive though I don't know why it just reminds me of like being in Montana through here there's not a lot of trees but just wide open sky and I pulled up here for a second because on my map I was looking for the old Cordes Junction Airport and I it was back there but it all said private property and <clears throat> well I didn't want to get back there where it says private property because <laughs> you know I don't want to get in trouble so I stayed off that area but there used to be an old airport back there you can see it on Google Maps but uh, I guess it's all been bought private property people don't, probably don't want people back there nosing around so I can understand that I always try to you know respect property rights and stuff with people like that I know some people that just drive right on there and start nosing around but it's not always a good idea to do that there's a lot of things people do sometimes that uh, kind of not good things to do and you'll see that in just a minute 
but you'll see these little turnoffs here like this. And I found this one and I thought, oh, this is a great spot. Watch here. Now, at first, it is. You know, you look at it and think, this is great. You could probably get three, four trailers back here. Motorhome, park, right? So we pulled on back in. That's why I like bringing the quad because you can kind of scope it out see how level it is you know if there's any ruts and this was a real nice area till we got around in the back side of this then we started to see some things here that didn't look really i was not happy that's one thing i really don't one thing that really gets my blood stirred up nothing faster than coming back here and seeing trash oh that really gets me we were kind of looking for campsites but I don't think I want to camp there well recently I've been getting online and I've been reading about problems that they've been having on BLM land, state trust land and some of the dispersed camp areas with people leaving trash and it's become not everywhere but there are areas where you have problems and we just ran into something out here we are i don't even know where we're kind of on bloody basin road out in the middle of nowhere here but it's all blm land it's windy let me show you this is what i'm talking about this is the kind of stuff they're talking about when people leave trash out here i'm not even sure what this would have come from It's like beer cans, camp equipment. There's some propane tanks there, tires. Oh my goodness, food, milk cartons. Somebody just came out here and dumped all the trash. That's sad. I guess they think they can just leave it out here for somebody else to pick up. We have garbage bags, and we have the little tongs to pick up garbage, but we didn't bring them in the quad. <laughs> I, can't, I don't even think I could bring a bag. I might be able to bring a bag. Throw it in a cargo trailer, you know. It's not everywhere, but it's one of those things you run into out here in the middle of nowhere. Cordes Junction is northeast there, about five miles. I-17 I is about two miles over that way. And there's a little junction right there. And if you keep going on the junction on the road, you'll wind up in Cleeter. Put an end to free camping. Well, yeah. Because they're going to end up having to charge people because they're going to have to come in and clean up stuff like this. Yeah. It's sad. Yep. It's sad. All right, well, let's mosey down the road, I guess. Yeah, I was really disappointed about that. That's going to take more than one or two garbage bags, I'm afraid. Oh, dang. I don't know how they're ever going to get that cleaned up back there. What are people thinking, you know, right? But back on the road, beautiful drive, looking for spots where you can pull off here. And heading into Spring Valley. Now, i got to tell you a little secret here. If you're watching this video, I'm not too sure how many people know this. Well, right here is BLM land, but as you get closer to Spring Valley, it turns into State Trust land. And in just a minute, you'll see as we come in the back way, there are some really nice little spots back there where you can camp in the back. It goes from BLM to State Trust, and I'll show you in the video when it gets close to that area. But isn't this, isn't this a beautiful drive? I mean, come on, right? And the wildflowers were still blooming, which made it even better. We've had so much rain. But uh, I think by the time you see this video, it's going to be warming up. And this area is not the kind of area you want to go camp in the summertime. No, 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 no. Uh, you're about 37, 3,800 feet right here. So you'll be okay here probably till maybe even into June if we have fair weather. But once the temperatures in Phoenix start hitting 100 degrees, you're going to be in the 90s here. You're going to be in the high 80s, 
low 90s and it just gets hotter from there so the one thing the one caveat I guess you could say is that it does cool down at night when we were up here it was 92 or 94 in Phoenix and it got up to 82 here in the daytime but as soon as the Sun went down it cooled off there's a little spot off to the right there did you see that now you're coming up on the, the road that goes into Mayer. If you make a left up here, you can go into Mayer. A little town that's just, uh, oh, it'll, you keep going like uh, north northwest. It'll take you into Mayer. Or you can make a right turn here and go into Sunset Valley. Spring Valley. I'm sorry, Spring Valley. You can make a right here and turn it into Spring Valley. Now, right when you turn onto this road, this area right here is all state trust land. And there are some areas here where you can't... Uh, not off to the right right there, though. That's Yavapai uh, County property. So you don't pull in there. But once you get past this... That's why you need to have a, a good map. Uh, Gaia maps and the X... Uh, on off on road off road maps is a good one too the, the Gaia maps I really like because it shows you where state trust land is and BLM land coming up here you'll be back into state trust land if you do camp out here though make sure you have a state trust permit I did see a few places where people have camped but this seems to be like a spot that people don't really know about so I'm not going to really advertise this a whole lot, but if you're watching this video, keep this in mind. This is right on the back side of Spring Valley. A lot of people don't even think about this. It's kind of out here. Now, there's not a lot of trees, and of course, in the summertime, it will be warm. But in the winter, uh, fall and spring, this is a great spot. Now, there's vehicle parked over there on the right that's uh, just they just offloaded there right? probably for the day but there's a couple other spots on the left there you could pull in and, and uh, camp for a night or two this would be a great spot you're close to the highway uh, highway that takes you into Prescott close to I-17 close to Cortis Junction uh, there's a couple little stores you'll see in just a minute we're going to drive into Gilligan's Market and there's a gas station there, so if you wanted to do some off-roading, this would be a great spot, you know? Uh, I'll look at all the trails that you got out here. It's just beautiful. And what a view. I mean, look at all, that's all the way looking into Agua Fria National Monument straight ahead. Now this is part two of our stay, and part three, Tammy and I took the quad over into the Agua Fria National Monument. We also are going to do it. I guess we're going to have to do another part because we did a ride in the Cleeter, and that's really cool. But uh, this little town is uh, Spring Valley, population of about 1,500 people, and, and maybe a little bit more than that. I think the population, the last census that was done was probably about 10 years ago. But uh, it, I think there's maybe more than 1,500 people because you can take in the areas around this area, Spring Valley. It's just a quiet little community. They got you know a church, a little market, a little store, um, a school. Kind of a nice little area it looks like. And the altitude here is good. It's about 3,800 feet right here. So the reason I say that is because even in the middle of the summer when it's like 110 in Phoenix it might get to be 101 up here but the nights are going to be cooler they'll cool off that's the thing when you get up in these altitudes like this up in northern arizona it might get warm in the daytime but at least at night it'll the temperatures will drop down and i think that just makes it so much more tolerable phoenix is just getting so bad because it gets to be 110 or 115 degrees in the summer but it doesn't cool down at night i mean we have nights where it doesn't even go below 100 degrees it's like late July mid July we'll have nights where it stays 100 degrees all night long and uh, <laughs> oh, I said those are just killers you get up at 
6 o'clock in the morning. That's 100 degrees already. Yeah. But uh, you gotta love it, right? It's Arizona. We love our winters. <laughs> so this little road, I don't even know the name of this road because I don't really, I've never ridden into this town. We just decided to come through here and check it out. But there's a little market up here called Gilligan's. You know, like Gilligan, Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Can't forget that, right? And uh, you can get gas there, and ice there. Um, there's a couple other stores, if I remember right. I saw a couple other spots off to the side, but we just came in here just to grab a drink. I think there's even a little laundry mat right here, if I remember right. So hey, I hope you guys found this video useful. Stay tuned for our next part. Safe travels wherever you're going. And uh, don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. And stay tuned for part three for our trip into Cleeter. And of course, the next part, I guess we'll have to do another part for our trip into our free and national monument. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.